Okay, welcome back. This is going to be part two of this video. And in this one, we're going to kind of finish it up by putting a title block around it, putting the hidden lines, and fully dimension this. So this may be a little longer video than normal, but we'll go ahead and get started. So the first thing I'm going to do is that, and if you, once again, if you haven't saw this the video of me creating this one, that's going to be part one of this one. So after I have completed everything, and everything is basically plain, and you can see I have no layers created or anything of that nature, all I did is just drew the part as it was. And I'm referring to the bearing, which I'll show you now. So this is kind of the continuation of what we created here. So I'll fully dimension this one. And then in part three of this video, I'm going to actually create the isometric. It's one of those things that is not done anymore in the industry unless you do this part in some kind of 3D program. But I'll go ahead and create the isometric. Okay, so we're going to bring in our title block. And the way we're going to do this is use the insert command. So I can either just type I enter or you can use the insert command that's located here. Both of them will work exactly the same. You should get the little insert dialog box that comes up along this side. If you want to search or look for your title block that you're going to use, and I'm using the B size one, and I did this in an earlier video, and I'll try to remember to link this one up here at the top. But this is going to be the title block that I'm going to use. And you can navigate to it by selecting here. And then wherever you have it located is where you'll put it. But I'm going to use this B-size title block. Now, it's always a good idea before I bring this in is to define my insertion point. Most of the time, any well, I prefer that any time you bring in a title block is that the lower left corner is at 0, 0, 0. So when I created my title block, the lower left corner is at 0, 0, 0. I'm going to let the scale be and everything else be what it is. I don't want anything asking me on the screen that when I bring this command in, it should just pop my title block here, lower left corner at 0, 0. So let's go ahead and navigate to it. Select my B size. Okay. And you can see that's exactly what AutoCAD did for me. It popped in my title block, lower left corner at 0, 0. One other thing about creating those layers and bringing in your title block, well, I'm sorry, creating your title block and then bringing it in, is that it will create all those layers for you. So now these layers are here. Now remember that I'm using a metric drawing. There's one benefit to using a metric drawing. That benefit is that most of the scales in there are just simple multiples of five. So here's an example of some of the scales you might see across the industry. But if you look at the metric column here, you can see that it's just 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 8, 16, 20. And some of the other ones that are not listed on here, you can go anywhere in between 20, like 25, and then 30, 35. So metric is one of those real easy ones to use. And then the scale factor, of course, would just be 1 to whatever that number is. It's always a good idea to kind of, once you get past the, the 20, is to keep it in multiples of 5. Any of these will work fine for the lower half, but once again, once you get past 20, everything in a multiple of 5. So try to remember that. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to scale my title block up. I'm just going to select the title block. And in this method, I'm going to be using the total way of, of doing all of the multiplication and the math this way. Some of the other videos that I made, I can either put this in paper space or I can use the annotation scale. So this one, I'm going to actually do the multiplication for you and show you how to do it the longer way. In other videos going forward, I think the next one I will make sure that I try to make, uh, I try to do it in the layout tab and the other way I will use the annotation scale. Okay, so go ahead and select your title block. Notice that I right clicked somewhere on my title block after selecting it. I'll go ahead and select the word properties. Now where it says scale X, scale Y, and scale Z. I'm just going to type in 25, 25, and in the Z category, we really don't have a Z. You can leave that as one, but I'm just putting in 25 just to keep everything consistent. Okay, so I'm just scrolling out and zooming out, and that looks like I should be able to get everything that I need inside of this, including the dimensions. Okay, so I'll go ahead and escape. And I can close my properties window, but I will bring that back up because I do like to use that anytime I'm in this portion of doing the drawings. 
All right, so I'm going to move this now into position. And I'm just going to use a simple move. I'll highlight it. Once you hit the enter button, go ahead and pick a base point. And then once again, my ortho is on. I'll just go ahead and turn that off here. Then I'll position that somewhere along here. Now, I'm intentionally leaving myself some room for whenever I create that isometric later. All right, so the next thing I want to do is I want to go ahead and start putting in my hidden lines. So the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to create it with construction lines. Now, it's always a good practice to go ahead and switch to that layer and then create your objects on that layer. Or you can do it the other way and just remember to come back and do it later. So I'll do these first group of holes with with me having to go back in and change them to that layer. So I'm going to use the construction line or X line vertical. And now I'm using these quadrants. Remember what I did in the last video. If you haven't watched it, I selected here on the up and then I selected quadrant. So I'm going to select that quadrant and this one and then this one. And this one okay so now that's going to give me something that I can trim off here at the bottom I'll go and use the trim command and remember that I'm using the 2023 version so what I have to do is I have to define the cutting line some of the earlier versions it start off by you defining the cutting lines and then going to the trim so in the 2023 version select cutting edges I'm gonna select these two lines and then this one. Now there is a setting in AutoCAD that I can use and have this line just project all the way across. But for this example, I'm not going to use it. So I have selected my cutting lines. Go ahead and hit the enter button to go to the next step. And then you can trim these off. If you want to go a little bit faster, just use the fence command. And that's just hitting F, enter. And all that's going to allow me to do is just draw a line going straight across. Come down here. And then straight across here enter and then escape okay now that I have both of my lines here I'm gonna select them both so I'm starting here on the right side one left click and I'll come across here and left click then I'll go to the drop down and then I'm looking for the hidden okay now one step I should have did before I start creating my hidden lines and one of the tails that I give that to you is that you don't see these dotted lines that are going around the outside of my title block. And remember we have to change the scale factor or the dim scale for the whole entire drawing to match that. And also we're going to change the line type scale. So I'll type in LTS and that's short for line type scale. Once I come to the line type scale I'm going to make that match whatever my scale factor was. And in this case, I set it to 25. Once I hit the enter button, you will see those dotted lines will show up on along my title block. Okay, so I have these center lines, or I'm sorry, these hidden lines in, and that shows those circles here. I'll go ahead and put the hidden lines that go up through here. Now this time, I'll do it by selecting the layer first. And then what I'm going to do, and then there's another way of doing that before I show you this. So if you don't want to go up here and physically select the layer that you want, you can also use the make current and then select on the layer that you want current. So if you have a bunch of layers that you have created, you can also use the make current. Okay, so what I want to do now is I'm going to go back and create those construction lines or X lines. And they're going to be vertical. And they're going to go from these inside quadrants. Okay, once you're done with that escape, go ahead and use the trim command like we did before. So trim. Go ahead and define the cutting, cutting edges. I'll select this front line and this back line. And the reason I'm selecting the cutting edge is because remember the AutoCAD will take Everything that it crosses out the cutting edge. So it'll start way down here and I don't want to have to walk those lines up. So it's easier for me to go ahead and select those two cutting edges. Go ahead and hit the enter button and then just trim them off. Enter. Okay. So now we do have our, our layers or our hidden lines inside. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start defining my center lines. And the way that we're going to do this is first, we're going to go over to the annotation tab. And here are our two center layers and center marks. 
All right, so I'm going to use the center layer command. That's going to be the first one I'm going to use. And before I did this, I should have showed you what command I'm actually using. I'm sorry, I misspelled that, but I could select it here. And now I have to tell it which layer that I want to use for that. I do remember the name of it is called center, but yours could be anything else. And let's go back to the home tab just to show you which layer that I am using. So I want to use the one that's called center. And while I'm here, I'm going to go ahead and click back on the zero layer just so I can stay drawing on that layer. Okay, so we already selected our center layer and made it onto center. Now, once again, this is going to be a metric drawing, so I'm going to change that extension that it sticks out from it. So that command is going to be center exe. And once I hit the enter button, you can see that it's a super small value in reference to metric drawings. So I'll make that number either three or five, and in this case, I think three should be fine. Okay, so now that I have my center layers defined by the layer and I have my extension set, now I'm actually ready to use the center line command. So I'll go to center line. And now this works as a bisecting center line, meaning that I have to select two lines and it will create the center line between the two. I'll do that again here on the bottom. So select the two lines, it'll place the center line on there for me. And I can also hit the enter button if you don't feel like going back up and clicking on the tab every single time. Okay, for the big one here, I'll go ahead and use a center mark. Let's go ahead and mark this one, that one, and that one. Okay, so now we have all of our center lines drawn and our center marks, and I do apologize if those center lines show up super light to you. I can change it and use a darker color, and let's go ahead and do that really quick. I'll go back to the home. I'll switch to the layer properties and it should bring open my layer dialog box here where it says center I'm just selecting that color box go ahead and use the blue oh did I yes and there you go and you should see it switch on your your screen let's go ahead and close that all right so now I have my center marks done my hidden lines are done uh, Everything is ready for this drawing to go, and it's probably a good idea for me to go ahead and fill in my title block while I have that information. So what I'm going to do is I can select it here, and once again, I can right-click and go to Properties. And here at the bottom, you can go ahead and type in your name, the project type, which in this case is going to be our bearing. And then we're going to go ahead and put in our scale, which is going to be 1, colon, 25 and then you can fill out the rest of the stuff okay now we're ready to go ahead and start putting our center lines on and I'm just going to move this down a little bit and then I'm going to auto hide it as well okay so now that I have this set up let's go back to the annotate tab Let's go and take a look at our dimensions, and for right now, it's telling me it's going to use the current style as a dimension. This is one of those things that I wish all versions of AutoCAD had, but this is just going to allow you that anytime you're creating a dimension, is that it's going to automatically put it on that correct layer for us. So go ahead and select Dimension here, and now let's go ahead and set up our dimension style. The style for that is going to be located here, or you can just type in D Enter. Either one will work exactly the same. Remember that I'm going to use the standard way of doing this, so I'm going to do all the calculations. It's not really that much to do, but if I, you know, I have to just know that going in. Okay, so I'm going to start with the lines, and everything in here should be fine. Let's go to symbols and arrows. We already have our center marks created, so I'm going to set this to none. Everything is set in that closed field, and that should be fine. The text height, let's go ahead and make it a little bit smaller. So let's go ahead and make it like 0.12. The fraction height, any of that stuff is fine. And these are just normal numbers that I want it to be. The multiplication part is going to be done automatically when I get to the fit tab because all of the numbers that I've selected so far or put in is going to be scaled by this number that I'm going to use. So I'm going to go ahead and type this number and make it 25. Our primary units, this is going to be metric, 
So there's no need for any decimals afterwards. So I'm going to make everything nice and whole numbers. And that should be everything that I need. So let's go to OK. And then close. OK, so let's go ahead and start putting in our numbers that we're going to need here. So let's start with a linear dimension. And I'll just go from this endpoint to this endpoint. And now you can see that it will give me 144. There is a quicker way of doing that. And I'll go ahead and delete this. If I use the linear command and I hit the enter button, you'll see now it's saying select an object to dimension. I can select this bottom line. And now I can go ahead and place that dimension. Let's go back to the linear. Let's go from this endpoint to this center line. And now that should tell me where that number is located, which is going to be 38. I'm going to come along here to the top. And remember our drawings told us that should be 108 from the centers to locate the centers. So I'll go ahead and locate it here. But in reality, we have to give the manufacturers another number to hold. So either I have to dimension from this edge going over or something of that nature. So I'm just going to use a linear dimension. And I want you to notice which direction that I, I select these in. I'm going to select this endpoint to this endpoint. And now when I go up, you'll see that the 18 is kicked out to the right side. So it remembers it's kind of flowing that direction. If I do it the other way, and I'm just going to hit the escape button, and I go to linear, and I select this endpoint, and then that endpoint, you'll see that that 18 is on the inside, and it's one of the things I have to come back and move. So keep in mind that when you're using your dimensions, kind of predict which way you want it to go. So I knew that it was going to kick out and it didn't have enough room there. So therefore, I select this inside dimension and then that endpoint. Then I'll select that endpoint just to keep everything in line. Okay, next I need to locate how far this is. Let's just use a linear dimension. And we're going to tell it that this overall distance is sitting at 60. I'll also put a linear dimension from here to that endpoint. That's at 42. And once again, I'm going to have another one of those dimensions that I know is going to be too small. So depending on which way I want that to kick out, I'm going to use a linear dimension. I'll select this endpoint, and then that endpoint. And in this case, it stayed in the middle, but if it would have kicked out, it would have kicked out to the top. So I'll go ahead and select and place that dimension along there. We can also use that baseline dimension that would have made that a lot easier. Let's go ahead and use a linear dimension here. And we're going to go from this endpoint to this center. And then I'll place that dimension here. And once again, I did that because I want the 16 to be at the top. I'm going to modify this 16. So I'm going to double click it and give it a second. And then the text selection box should be coming up. I usually like to hit the home button on my keyboard. And I'll type in 2x with a space. Go ahead and close the text editor. And there it is. Let's go ahead and put our diameter dimensions on here. So I'll just use the diameter. Click here. Place that dimension. And once again, that needs a 2x in front of it. So I can select it here. And you can also do this in the properties. There is something that's called a prefix, so I can put a prefix in front of it. Or, if I want to use something else, I can also come the overwrite and type in 2x space less than greater than symbol, enter. And you'll see that that will update as well. Come back to this side. Let's go ahead and put another linear dimension here. So, a linear dimension. From that end point to here. Let's go ahead and place our diameter dimensions on our big circles. And one more diameter dimension here. And then I have to label a radius dimension. Which is going to be located here. And you see how sometimes you'll get this extension 
or I can go ahead and place it down here. I will show you in a later video how to get rid of that extension. It's just simple by going into the properties and just turning the extension off. But I think it looks better being placed right here. And like I did before, I can either double click this or I can select it in the properties and go and change it. Oh, look like I clicked too fast. I can go and change it in the in the overwrite. So remember that's two x space less than equal uh, greater than, and all that means is just use the regular dimensions. Okay, and I'm just kind of giving the drawing a once over just to make sure that I have everything that I needed dimension. So I have my holes located. They're both located. I have the thickness and the length of all of that. I have all of my circles cut. I think that should be everything that I need to produce this drawing. You know, that you could put one more dimension on here and it kind of goes without saying. But if I also added a linear dimension from this end point to here, that's kind of understood that it should be half of that. But in some cases, it won't hurt to do that. Or you can make it a reference dimension if you like. Okay. Next thing I'm going to do is zoom the extents. And now you can see that I have this drawing all created. I have all the dimensions. And there was no need to create the right side because I was able to dimension everything that I needed on this entire drawing just on these two views. All right. So this is part two of this video. And once again, if you like this and you want to follow along with me, please do part one and also do uh, watch the video where I created the title block so you can follow along all the way with me. The next thing I'm going to be doing is, in reference to this drawing is creating the isometric and then I'll place it somewhere located here and this drawing should be completed. Okay, so I uh, thank you for watching this one and stay tuned for part three.